Hey kids, it's Papa. Are you ready to explore the Bible? All right. Take your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 14. Now I want you to get your Bibles and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 14. I want you to listen closely today because we're going to hit a whole bunch of important things and uh, you need to see them. Now remember on Monday we talked about how that the uh, that Jonathan and his armor bearer went out and they fought against the garrison and they defeated them. They killed about 20 men and then the Lord honored that. And when we are willing to step out on faith, God honors that. And uh, many times if we're willing to do the little, he's willing to do the much. And so um, we, we, he, uh, we, he, he sent an earthquake. I want you to take a look at verse 15. And there was a trembling in the host and in the field and among all of the people and the garrison and the spoilers. And they also trembled. Okay, so it wasn't just the earth. It was also everybody was shaking. And so there was a very great trembling. And the watchmen of Saul in Gibeah of Bethlehem, uh, Benjamin looked and behold, the multitude melted away and they went on beating down one another. Now what happened here? Well, the watchmen that were, for the Israelite watchmen that were watching all of the Philistines noticed that it, in the earthquake, something was happening and the Philistines, you know, got up out of their tent and they come running out and they started fighting against each other. The Philistines are fighting against each other and they're, you know, they're beating each other down and, and, uh, and this is a good thing, right? And, uh, and so Saul says, well, quick, who, uh, who's doing this? See, he didn't even recognize that God was doing it. And he says, who's doing this? I want you to check and see who's missing from us. And they numbered everybody. And, uh, and it was Jonathan and his armor bearer were the only ones that were gone. And uh, so then King Saul said, well, notice verse 18. It says, and Saul said unto Ahiah, he, he was the priest, bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was at the, that time with the children of Israel. And, uh, and, and so he says, bring the ark of God. Now, why would he do that? He did that because he wanted to inquire of God. That's a good thing, okay? Um, notice in verse 19, it says, and it came to pass that while Saul talked unto the priest that the noise was in the host of the Philistines went and on and increased. And Saul said unto the priest, withdraw thine hand. Now, in other words, he said, bring, yeah, Grammy my Mai just showed up. Anyway, he said, bring the ark. Okay, so they brought the ark. And then he said, now I need the priest. Now the priest had a breastplate on with all of these beautiful gems and stones. And on it was a thing called the Urim and the Thummim. And we're not exactly sure what these were. But what would happen with the, the Urim and the Thummim was that the uh, priest wearing the breastplate would come up to the king. And the king would put his hands on these things. And he would say, Lord, please show me, guide me. And so he says, bring the Ark of the Covenant. And priest, come here, I want to ask of God. But then he never asked of God, okay? He wanted to appear spiritual, but he really didn't have any confidence in God or in the spiritual. And so we find that uh, they they quick got the soldiers together. They assembled themselves in verse 20. And they came to the battle and behold, every man's sword was against his fellow. And there was a great discomfiture. In other words, the Philistines were fighting against themselves. Uh, and, uh, and then we find that apparently there were some uh, Israelites who had been forced to fight with the Philistines uh, on the same side as the Philistines. And they said, hey, we're not going to do this anymore. And so they turned and fought against the Philistine, Philistines as well. Uh, and so it was a, a great slaughter. Notice verse 22. And likewise, the men of Israel, which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, they, even they also followed hard after the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over against beth -Avon. So we find here that God is doing a great thing. But I want you to see here that Saul goes and does something stupid. Um, and he, he says that uh, Israel, uh, 
Saul says, you know what, we're going to fight against these people and nobody stop and eat because we need to chase after these people. Notice verse 24, and the men of Israel were distressed that day for Saul had adjured the people. He had commanded the people saying, cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening that I may be avenged on my enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. Okay. Now here, Saul should have said, you know, we're fighting these battles because they are God's enemies. But instead, he was saying, don't eat anything so that I can avenge myself on my enemies. See, he was completely keeping God out of the equation. And when we keep God out of the equation, God says, okay, fine, do it your own way. But a wise man says, hey, I need God. I need him, not only in my life, but I need him fighting my battles. And I need him giving me strength. And I need him guiding me. And God had given Saul all of the tools. He just wouldn't use them. And so we need to learn to trust God. And so we're going to see how this continues, uh, you know, tomorrow, but or actually on Friday. But here we see that Saul was, he didn't understand what was going on. He didn't know who was defeating who. He, he had no idea who was fighting for him. He wanted to appear spiritual, but then he didn't follow through. And then he said, these are my enemies, instead of letting them be God's enemies. And so God backed off and said, okay, fine. Hey, love you guys. I hope you're learning from these things. Because God didn't tell them the, uh, the tell us these things so that we would ignore them. He told us these things so we would learn from them. Love you guys. See you later.